All right, so we've got our batteries. We have finally made a decision and have purchased our batteries. We have been debating whether to go with lithium versus lead acid for, it feels like, the beginning of time. I, mean, so, I don't know, two, two years. Two years, the same conversation on and off. Literally, we did our research and compared all the well-known advantages and disadvantages of lithium versus lead acid. Lithiums last longer but AGMs are much cheaper, maybe even 10 times cheaper. And then with lithium batteries you can safely use up to 80% of the power in the actual battery, meanwhile with AGMs it's closer to 50%. AGMs are also much easier to monitor. All you need to do is uh, measure the voltage. Uh, instead of with, with lithiums, you have to have a smart monitor that can uh, measure the input and output of, of that battery. You have to have extra technology going on with the lithium to keep the lithium safe. This also makes AGMs much easier to work with on a daily basis. Um, unless you have the technology. These lithium batteries are three to four times lighter than their AGM counterparts. And as we all know, in a van conversion, weight is a massive priority. Now, if we're thinking about it from an environmental uh, point of view, lead acid batteries are definitely more recyclable than lithium because all the lead acid batteries that we buy now new are made from recycled lead. Mm. It, meanwhile, <laughs> the lithium... It's horrible to mine, horrible to extract and really difficult to actually recycle properly. If you watch The Good Place, I feel like cheating. <laughs> like, you, you cannot make a good decision here in, in a way. It's, it's like, where, where do you where do you waste also a very important point for us to consider is that we're going to be going completely off grid in our full-time home here we need to be able to replenish the power that we use relatively quickly and when it comes to uh, the, the two battery types lithiums are definitely better at um, you know uh, expelling charge and receiving so charging and discharging faster whilst AGMs are more relative but then having said so lithiums are worse at cold temperature charging so there was our conundrum <laughs> So yeah, we did speak to uh, experts who swear by both battery types with the utmost passion and we have come to the conclusion that they are both correct. Both batteries can work and get the job done in, in, in your camper van. Alright, so now that we have that out of the way and we have turned you into a gluten pretzel, why do we actually choose lithium batteries over AGM? How do we make that decision? Uh, it, because honestly, it, it was a complete mess in our head as to what what we should do and if, even when we were buying them I had a knot in my stomach Going, so is this the right decision? It's like, it's like it's so much money what do I do? Alright so to explain the process that we went through we need to compare lithiums and AGMs we do have a lithium battery but oh we do have a lead acid. Hold on. One moment. And here. Okay. Jeez. Just, just need a breath to catch my. You need a moment to catch my breath. So the most common contenders for leisure batteries in camper van conversions are lithium ion phosphate, which is this one here, and lead acid AGM, which is this one here. The precise chemical makeups of these batteries are very important. For example, with the lithium, lithium ion phosphate, which is this one here, is good, but lithium ion and lithium polymer, like the batteries that you use in your phones and your laptops, they're quite a bit more Explosive. Explosive and don't last as long and they're a bit more weak when it comes to like being hit or punctured or bent or things like that. Meanwhile, this one doesn't. So in short, <laughs> when looking at leisure batteries, lithiums, it has to be lithium yeah. iron phosphate, not any other abbreviation, okay? Yeah. Meanwhile, lead acids have been around a lot longer, which means that there's a lot more variety uh, out there on the market. The oldest uh, types of um, lead acid batteries are called flooded batteries. They're the ones that when you pick them up, if you can pick them up, if you can pick them up, you, you will hear them sloshing. There's actually liquid in them. Now, flooded batteries are the cheapest type of batteries you can buy, but they're definitely not recommended for camper van conversions because firstly, you have to add water to them. And secondly, they vent off hydrogen gas because they're not sealed, which is uh, flammable. And toxic. 
And toxic. So you have to build like a little airtight box to keep them in and vent the gas. Yeah, outside. so it's similar like like to your LPG tank or something like that. If you have it inside the, the, the vehicle, you have to have a protective compartment around it. Also, camper vans generally move and these batteries have to be stable um, and to, to have the liquid, you know, not sloshing around, which obviously when you're moving, yeah. The next stage up are uh, sealed gel batteries or uh, VRLA batteries. They're very similar to photo batteries, but unlike photo batteries, they don't need any special maintenance with adding water to them. They're completely sealed, so they don't vent out toxic gases. And because they have that gel, the electrolytes inside are more stable, which means that they'll be more durable in the vehicle. But on the other side of that, they do cost more per amp hour, uh, and you get essentially less amp hours for the same box. Uh, size and the, and the same weight and they can easily get damaged from overcharging. So neither gel or flooded batteries are recommended for van conversions but they are important to mention because they are generally cheaper than AGM and it's an easy trap to fall into. So with AGM batteries they're very similar to gel batteries meaning they don't need any maintenance, they don't vent off anything, they're very stable so you can mount them in a camper van and they won't break or explode or anything like that. On top of that they are spill proof, vibration resistant, uh, they hold charge a lot better which means that they have a much longer battery life to their other lead acid counterparts. Hence they are ideal for deep cycle uses and trickle charging via solar which is excellent because most of us do end up putting solar panels on our, on our vehicles. So now we're left with AGM lead acid batteries and a lithium iron phosphate battery. And honestly for the longest time we were going to go with a lead acid AGM battery partially because the majority of people went with them. They were the most examples of, of those batteries. Also they're much more budget friendly in the short term. However after doing some maths uh, we established that we're going to be going for a, a full-time live-in van situation we're going to be doing daily stuff and we're also going to be working from home full-time and because of the type of work uh, where we have to do we need <laughs> two highly powered computers which basically means that we need a lot of amp hours yes <laughs> so if we were going to go with AGM we're gonna actually have to buy double the amount of amps that we need and that is very very heavy. So after calculating our maximum daily load that we would need in the van we calculated we need around 520 amp hours of AGM and because we wanted to go with the high quality AGM batteries not the cheap ones it was going to cost us around 750 pounds and 150 kilograms in pure battery weight alone. Which honestly I don't know how you even lift that in the van. We struggle to lift this 26 kilogram AGM battery in the van now and each of those batteries would have been about 76 kilos. Essentially so one of me in this container. And actually as far as I'm concerned the 150 kilograms that we would have had to pay in weight is a higher cost than the 750 pounds that the battery actually uh, co costed. So where was our pivot point? We went to a van life meetup and uh, you know with all this confusion in our head and we explained this uh, to, to people and it was actually Ash from Lost in Europe who said I think you should get lithium and I think you should talk to Phil. So we spoke to Phil and we ended up with lithium. <laughs> so we spoke to Phil, he's from uh, geekyphilip or modhomer.com, he knows a lot about lithium batteries and camper vans uh, and from uh, those ex exchanges we came up with uh, this table. <laughs> so what that table shows and what all those calculations mean is that over a 10 year period using the batteries at their recommended setting so using lithium only draining it 80% of the way and with AGM only draining it 50% of the way is that over those 10 years we would need to buy three sets of AGM batteries and one set of lithium batteries. In very crude terms AGMs can, uh, can turn out more expensive than lithiums if you're going to be investing into your, into your camper van for a longer period of time, which we are. It's just the upfront cost for AGM batteries is lower. Naturally, you have to take care of both types of batteries and there are ways that you can uh, damage and kill these batteries immediately. <laughs> but there are also ways that you can extend the, the life of, of both batteries. Our comparison accounts for perfect function in both types of batteries. When the batteries are new, 
they're at 100% capacity. At the 10-year mark, the chances that the lithium is going to be at 100% capacity, if taken care of properly, is still quite high. However, with LEDASA batteries at the age of 10 years, their capacity would likely have dropped to 50 to 80 percent and their discharge rate would probably also be quicker like yeah. just leaving them to idle they'll discharge quicker over time it's just yeah. the way that lead acid batteries mm. age yeah now lithium thankfully have the same aging process but it is much slower mm. the chances are your camper van other parts of your camper van <laughs> will die first before your battery so having proved to ourselves that lithiums can be a good investment the other thing is that cost wasn't the only pivotal factor for us. In fact, another big factor was the weight. We did go to weigh the van when it was completely empty. We accounted for uh, two people in the van, a fuel tank and a full water tank. And it turned out that we will only have just over a thousand kilograms to work with to build the whole house. And with those 520 amp hours of AGMs that we wanted to go with, 150 kilograms of that weight would have gone straight into the batteries. Meanwhile, with the batteries that we actually bought, these two lithium ones, they only add up to 26 kilograms. That is a 124 kilogram difference. And then it occurred to us that if we wanted to go with AGMs, ergo saving ourselves uh, some money on the electrical system, then we're going to have to spend more money on lightweight materials, which are always more expensive than, you know, the standard easily found yeah. materials in, in, in the hardware store. Yeah, because we basically have to offset that 150 kilos that we've added to the van. Now, we did have our concerns about lithium batteries, mainly the cold charging aspect. We have been warned by multiple people that uh, cold, cold charging lithium batteries can damage the batteries quite drastically and that is a very big boo-boo <laughs> on that big of an investment. Now, <laughs> I, I will add that both AGM and lithium batteries do not fare well with cold charging. However, if you get it wrong, AGM batteries are a lot cheaper to replace. Meanwhile, the investment cost in lithium is a lot higher. So it's a bit more of a costly mistake. We are going to take precautions to make sure that these batteries are nice and warm, especially in the event of an emergency, if the heating goes off and it is minus or below outside. So we are going to build a insulated coat around these batteries, insulate the box they're going in. And also if the van is going to stay empty for some time um, and the heating will not need to be on in that case, we are going to take the batteries out. But how Having said so, if you do have any advice on how to improve temperature security with lithium batteries, then please let us know in the comments down below. And we would really like to know if you have any experience with these batteries, uh, how have they performed? Uh, have you managed to com compare the two? Have you used both of them? And uh, yeah, if you have any concerns about choosing, I mean, at this point, we're experts at being confused <laughs> and trying to unravel uh, ourselves out of the confusion. So you can ask us any, any questions as well. well. We'll do our best to answer them. Shoot them down. So in the yeah, box. subscribe for next week's wiring or send me wiring or yeah, see you next time.